The first step after getting your AeroPod is to connect it to your USB charger to charge up its battery fully. Once you connect AeroPod, after a few seconds the light will start to flash. When AeroPod is fully charged, the red status light will turn off. We'll use Isaac software to set up the parameters that go into AeroPod's internal memory. I've connected AeroPod to the Isaac software. I can see that's because the green box appears around the USB icon. I'm now going to select Device, Setup Device to start the parameter entry sequence. A new window will appear. I click Next. You'll see that AeroPod has four different profiles. Profile number four is the one we use for CDA measurement, so that one has been automatically selected by AeroPod. I'm going to enter the name of my bicycle, and then click Next. Here, I will select my unit's preference, my rider weight, and rider height. My normal ride position is on the hoods, so I leave that alone. I click Next. Here I will enter in the total weight of my bike, my water bottles, and my other gear. Notice that when I do that, Isaac automatically readjusts the total weight of the bicycle and rider. If I have different wheels, I select those wheels there. And then finally, I select the position where I'm going to attach AeroPod to my bike. In my case, I'm going to be using a front mount. This window allows you to adjust the rolling resistance for the conditions that you have on your bike. You'll notice that the typical settings are checked when you enter the window, but if you want to change it to something else, you can do that here. Also, you can adjust your tire pressure. I use the typical settings, so I'm just going to click that box and then click Next. Finally, I will select Best Accuracy in order to enable the out and back calibration ride. After a few seconds, you'll get a confirming message saying that the device settings have been sent, and now you're ready to go to the step where you pair AeroPod to your bike sensors. I'm using the combo front mount on my bicycle. I've attached it, and it's very important to confirm that it cannot move at all. Any movement of the mount will cause problems. Do not use carbon mounts or do not use mounts that are attached in a flimsy manner to your bicycle. I've now attached AeroPod to my bike with the screw, but notice that I have not tightened the screw enough. AeroPod must be completely stiff on the mount and be completely incapable of turning at all. When I tighten the screw sufficiently, now AeroPod is stiff. That's the way it needs to be for good measurements. When I click the button of AeroPod, its status light turns red. When the light is solid red, that means that the AeroPod has not yet been paired to the sensors. I have awakened all of the sensors on my bike. Those would include a separate speed sensor, a crank mounted cadence sensor, and a direct force power meter. If you have a direct force power meter with the cadence sensor built in, the AeroPod will record the cadence data directly from your DFPM. I'm now going to start the pairing process by pressing and holding the AeroPod button for about four seconds. The pairing process will begin when the status light flashes green. During the pairing process, the light will change color as it finds different sensors. Because I am using a separate cadence sensor on my bike, when it finds that cadence sensor, the status light will flash red three times. When the AeroPod finds the direct force power meter, its status light will flash yellow three times. And finally, when it turns solid green, it means it's found the speed sensor and the pairing process is complete. When using AeroPod with a Garmin, make sure you've paired AeroPod to the Garmin and make sure you have selected AeroPod as the power sensor. AeroPod will retransmit data from your DFPM so you don't need to set your DFPM as your power sensor. You'll need to set up your Garmin to use the Connect IQ app that reads AeroPod CDA data. 
follow the instructions supplied separately to load the Connect IQ app onto your Garmin. Then set up a screen where you have two fields. This particular one has cadence in field one and power in field two. I'm going to change field one to read the Aeropod data. It's very important before you set up the screen that you have Aeropod on and paired to your Garmin. This allows your Garmin to read the Aeropod data right from the start. I go to the Connect IQ screen and from there I'll select the Aeropod CDA option. Now I have Aeropod CDA in field one of screen two and power in field two. I've now started a ride on my Garmin and I've gone to screen two which shows CDA data and power. You should see numbers in the field on top and you should see your power in the field below. If you see dashes in the top field where you have CDA, wind, slope, and time advantage, perform this procedure again and make sure Aeropod is paired to your Garmin before you load the screen. Now that Aeropod has been paired to your sensors and to your Garmin, you're ready to start the calibration. Notice that when we click the Aeropod button, the status light shows solid yellow. Before sensor pairing, it was solid red. Okay, when the light is yellow, Aeropod is armed to do a calibration ride, but to actually initiate it, you need to ride your bicycle to the place where you want to start. That may be right where you are now, or you may need to ride some distance down the road. I'm going to simulate riding my bike down the road simply by spinning the wheel of the bicycle. What happens is that when the wheel spins, Aeropod will begin to pick up that data and after a few seconds, you'll see the light change from solid yellow over to flashing red and green. When it changes to flashing red and green, that means that it is completely ready to do the calibration ride. Okay, now it's flashing red and green. I continue riding my bicycle to where I want to start the ride, and when I'm actually ready to start the ride, I'm going to click the button one more time, which will cause the light to change to flashing yellow. Flashing yellow means I'm now on the out part of my calibration ride. Let's describe your out and back calibration ride using the pictorial provided in the instructions. In step one, you've paired Aeropod to your bike sensors and its status light is solid yellow. You're ready to calibrate. In step two, you start riding and after about 10 seconds, the solid yellow light changes to flashing red and green. It will continue to flash red and green as you ride to your starting point in step three. You'll stop in step four, your watts will read zero, and in step six you'll click the button of Aeropod to begin the calibration. The flashing red and green will change to flashing yellow. You'll now ride out about three minutes the light will continue to flash yellow and the watts will slowly climb from 0 to 50. When you reach the 50 watt mark, the flashing yellow light will turn solid red and when it's safe, you'll stop. When you stop, you'll turn around, the solid red light will turn to flashing yellow and you'll ride back to your starting point. Now the watts will slowly climb from 50 to 70 watts at the starting point you'll continue to ride beyond the starting point for about another five or six minutes and the watts will slowly climb from 70 to 100. When the watts reach 100, the flashing yellow light will go out, you'll see normal watts, and your Aeropod will be fully calibrated.